What if I told you that there exist celestial beings that have a profound influence on human destiny? This isn't the plot of a sci-fi novel or a blockbuster movie. No, we're diving into the ancient and mysterious world of Gnosticism, a spiritual philosophy that has intrigued thinkers for centuries. Gnosticism, a spiritual movement that flourished in the Mediterranean world in the first few centuries AD, offers a unique cosmology. It presents a universe far removed from our everyday perceptions, a universe teeming with divinities and celestial beings, each playing its part in the cosmic drama of existence. Among these celestial beings, a group stands out for their peculiar role in the Gnostic narrative, the Archons. The term Archon, derived from the Greek word for ruler, is used in Gnosticism to denote a specific type of celestial being. These beings, according to Gnostic belief, are not benevolent deities showering blessings upon humanity. Rather, they are a complex lot, with their actions and intentions often shrouded in ambiguity. In the grand cosmic hierarchy, the Archons occupy an interesting position. They are not the highest divine beings, yet they wield significant power. They are not the creators of the universe, but they have a say in its affairs. And most intriguingly, they have a peculiar fascination for humanity. Why this fascination? What role do the Archons play in human affairs? How do they shape our destiny? These are the questions we will explore as we delve deeper into the Gnostic tale involving the Watchers, the Archons. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a fascinating journey, traversing the cosmic realms of Gnosticism and exploring the intriguing world of the Archons, a journey that will take us from the celestial heights to the earthly plains, from the dawn of creation to the struggle for spiritual liberation. Welcome to a journey where we uncover the mysteries of the Archons and their role in shaping human destiny. In the beginning there were the Archons, Thus begins the tale within the Gnostic cosmogony, a tale as old as time, yet one that continues to echo across the ages. In the vast expanse of the cosmos, the Archons emerged, not born, but materialized from the primordial essence of the universe itself. They were celestial entities, powerful and enigmatic, each embodying a different aspect of the cosmos. From the fiery passion of a supernova to the quiet tranquility of a distant nebula, the Archons were the living manifestations of the universe's many facets. Their realm was the ether, the space between spaces, where they existed in a state beyond our understanding of time and space. It was a realm of endless possibilities, a realm where the laws of the universe as we know them held little sway. The Archons, in their infinite wisdom, ruled this realm, shaping it according to their whims and desires. Yet despite their power and majesty, the Archons were not the supreme beings of the cosmos. Above them existed higher divine entities, beings of pure energy and thought who resided within the Pleroma, the Gnostic term for the spiritual universe. The Archons held a complex relationship with these higher entities. They were both revered and feared, for while the Archons held dominion over their realm, they were but sparks compared to the blazing inferno that was the divine. The Archons, in their desire to understand these divine beings, sought to emulate them. They endeavored to create, to bring forth life as the divine beings had done, yet their creations were imperfect, flawed reflections of the divine. This was the beginning of the Archons' fascination with creation and life, a fascination that would eventually lead them to Earth, to humanity. Thus the Archons took their place in the cosmos, but their story was just beginning. This is the origin of the Archons, the watchers of the Gnostic cosmogony. It is a tale that sets the stage for their interactions with humanity, their struggles, their triumphs, and their ultimate destiny. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. The Archons, intrigued by humanity, descended to Earth. Imagine celestial beings, fascinated by the vitality and potential of humans, leaving their ethereal realm to explore the physical world. The Archons, in their curiosity, undertook this grand descent, drawn to the allure of humanity's spirit. Their journey from the heavens to earth wasn't just a physical transition, but a metaphysical adventure, marking the beginning of a profound interaction between the divine and the mortal. 
In the Gnostic narrative, the Archons observed humanity from their celestial vantage point with a mixture of fascination and envy. Humans, unlike the Archons, were not merely spiritual beings. They were a blend of the physical and the divine, capable of nuanced emotions, creativity and growth. This ability to change, to evolve, stood in stark contrast to the Archon's static existence and it intrigued them immensely. Their descent to Earth wasn't a silent affair. The Archons made their presence felt, subtly influencing the course of human events. They didn't just observe, they interacted, they meddled, they shaped, they sowed seeds of thought, nudged the course of civilizations, and whispered in the ears of the powerful. Their influence wasn't always malevolent, but it was pervasive, and it left an indelible mark on human consciousness. The interactions between the Archons and humans were complex, a dance of influences and responses. Humans, for their part, were often unaware of these celestial visitors. The Archons, however, were always conscious of their influence, treating the world as a grand chessboard moving pieces according to their whims and watching the ripples unfold. But the Archons were not just influencers, they were also students. They learned from humanity, from our joys and sorrows, our victories and defeats. They witnessed the strength of the human spirit, the capacity for love and compassion, the will to strive against adversity. These experiences stirred something within the Archons, sparking questions about their own existence and purpose. Yet, their influence on human consciousness was not without consequences. The Archons, in their fascination with humanity, inadvertently shaped our perception of the Divine. They became the unseen forces, the puppet masters behind the curtain, subtly influencing our beliefs, our actions and our understanding of the world. In this dance with humanity, the Archons found themselves caught in a paradox. On one hand, their interactions with humans offered them a glimpse into the richness of mortal existence. On the other hand, their influence on human consciousness served to further distance them from the very essence they sought to understand. The descent of the Archons to Earth, then, is not just a tale of celestial beings meddling in human affairs. It's a story of curiosity, interaction and influence. It's a narrative about the search for understanding, the desire for connection, and the complex interplay between the divine and the mortal. And so the Archons began their dance with humanity. The Archons, masters of illusion, began their attempts to control and deceive. Imagine celestial puppeteers pulling the strings of humanity, shaping their perceptions and directing their actions. This was the role the Archons assumed in the Gnostic narrative. Their primary tool, illusion, their aim, to keep mankind chained in ignorance, far from the liberating light of Gnosis. In the Gnostic worldview, the Archons were not just celestial beings of power, they were architects of false realities. These cosmic tricksters spun intricate webs of deception, creating a grand illusion that masked the true nature of the universe. Their realm was not one of truth or enlightenment, but a shadowy theatre of manipulation and control. But why, you might ask, would these celestial beings resort to such tactics? The answer lies in their nature and purpose. The Archons, according to Gnostic law, were not benevolent gods bestowing wisdom upon mankind. Rather, they were enforcers of ignorance, obstructionists to the divine light. Their mission was to maintain their dominion over the earthly realm, a dominion threatened by the prospect of human spiritual awakening. The Archons' illusions took many forms, each designed to distract and mislead. They painted a picture of a world governed by materialism and carnal desires. A world where the pursuit of power and pleasure outweighed the quest for spiritual knowledge. They stoked the fires of fear and doubt, sowing chaos and confusion, making it difficult for humans to discern truth from falsehood. In the minds of men and women, they planted seeds of ego and selfishness, fostering a sense of separation from each other and from the divine. These illusions created by the Archons served as a spiritual smokescreen, obscuring the path to enlightenment. They fashioned a reality so captivating, so all-consuming, that humanity became enmeshed in it, losing sight of their higher spiritual purpose. This was the Archons' masterstroke, their grand deception. 
They made mankind believe they were mere actors in a cosmic play, when in fact they were the playwrights, capable of rewriting their destiny. But the Archon's control was not absolute. Their illusions, no matter how intricate, were not impenetrable. The Gnostics believed that humanity, armed with Gnosis, the knowledge of the divine, could see through the Archon's deceptions. They could break free from the chains of ignorance, tear down the walls of the illusionary world and step into the light of truth. This was the ultimate act of rebellion against the Archon's reign, the first step towards spiritual liberation. In the grand theatre of life, the Archons held the strings. They choreographed the dance of deception, leading humanity on a merry dance of illusion. But the Gnostic narrative offers a glimmer of hope, a way to cut those strings and reclaim control. It tells us that the power to dispel illusions, to shatter false realities, resides within us. And in this knowledge lies our potential for liberation, our hope for awakening. Yet humanity was not without its defences. In the face of the Archon's influence, the Gnostics proposed a powerful tool, Gnosis or knowledge. This wasn't just any knowledge, but a profound transformative understanding that could lead to spiritual liberation. It was a radical idea, suggesting that the key to freedom lay not in compliance or resistance, but in the pursuit of wisdom. The Gnostics believed that Gnosis was a divine spark a fragment of the supreme divine being that resided within each human. This spark was obscured by the illusion spun by the Archons, but it could be uncovered through introspection, revelation, and the pursuit of self-knowledge. In Gnostic texts, we find tales of individuals who managed to break free from the Archon's control through Gnosis. One such story is that of Sophia, a divine being who descended into the world of the Archons, became entangled in their realm, but ultimately regained her divine status through self-realization. She symbolizes the human soul, lost in the world of matter and illusion, but capable of ascension through the discovery of her true nature. Sophia's journey is a metaphor for humanity's struggle, showing us that enlightenment and liberation are possible, even in the face of overwhelming forces. Another figure often associated with Gnosis and liberation is Jesus. In Gnostic teachings, Jesus is a revealer of wisdom, a bringer of Gnosis. He is depicted not as a saviour in the traditional sense, but as a guide who can lead humanity to self-discovery and freedom from the Archon's influence. The Gnostic Jesus often speaks in riddles and parables, encouraging his followers to seek the deeper, hidden meanings of his words. His teachings are not about adhering to laws or performing rituals, but about seeking the kingdom within, uncovering the divine spark, and achieving spiritual liberation. These stories and teachings underscore the Gnostic belief in the power of knowledge. They tell us that the Archon's influence is not absolute, that their control can be challenged, and that liberation is within our reach. Through Gnosis, humans can awaken to their true nature, see through the Archon's illusions, and reclaim their spiritual sovereignty. So while the Archons may weave complex webs of deception and control, they are not invincible. Their power lies in ignorance, in the absence of knowledge. When illuminated by the light of Gnosis, their illusions fade, their influence wanes, and their control is broken. This is the essence of the Gnostic struggle for liberation, a journey of self-discovery, a quest for knowledge, and a battle against the forces that seek to keep us in ignorance and spiritual bondage. It is a struggle that demands courage, perseverance, and the unwavering pursuit of truth. Thus, the struggle for liberation from the Archons began. Beyond their literal existence, the Archons also served as potent symbols in the rich tapestry of Gnostic thought. They embody significant psychological and spiritual barriers that each of us may encounter on our path towards self-awareness and enlightenment. The Archons, in their capacity as celestial puppeteers, symbolize the unseen forces that manipulate our perceptions and influence our actions. They stand as metaphors for the internal and external pressures that can lead us astray from our true spiritual path. This could be anything from societal expectations and cultural norms to our personal fears, doubts and insecurities. Think of the Archons as representations of our inner demons, the shadows in our psyche that we must confront and overcome to reach our true potential. 
They are the embodiment of our anxieties, our ignorance, our uncontrolled passions, and all the mental constructs that hinder our spiritual awakening. They are the whispers of self-doubt that tell us we are not good enough, not wise enough, not divine enough to seek and attain enlightenment. In Gnostic thought, these psychological barriers are not to be feared, but understood, for it is through understanding that we can begin to dismantle them. The Archons are not invincible tyrants, but rather challenges to be overcome, lessons to be learned. They symbolize the trials we must pass and the obstacles we must surmount on our journey towards self-realization. In this context, the Archons also serve as a mirror, reflecting our own limitations back at us. They highlight the areas in our lives where we are not free, where we are bound by illusions or misconceptions, where we are trapped in patterns of behavior that do not serve our highest good. By symbolizing these aspects of our experience, the Archons provide us with a map, a guide to the parts of ourselves that we need to explore and transform. But it is important to remember that in the Gnostic tradition, the Archons, despite their trickery and manipulation, are not inherently evil. They are part of the cosmic order, part of the process of spiritual growth. They are the catalysts that push us to question, to seek, to strive for a deeper understanding of ourselves and the universe. It's through our interactions with these symbolic Archons, these metaphoric walls, that we are given the opportunity to grow. We are presented with a choice. Remain in the comfort of illusion or muster the courage to seek the truth, to challenge the status quo, to transcend the boundaries set by the Archons. So, in essence, the Archons are not just celestial beings of Gnostic cosmology. They are symbolic representations of our own internal struggles, the hurdles we must leap over in our quest for self-awareness and spiritual growth. They are the challenges we face as we strive to break free from the illusions that bind us and step into the light of truth and understanding. In the labyrinth of the mind, the Archons are the walls we must overcome. They are the obstacles on our path, the thresholds we must cross, the shadows we must illuminate on our journey toward enlightenment. The tale of the Archons, though ancient, resonates with our modern world. As we delve into the contemporary significance of the Gnostic Archons, we find that their narrative of control, illusion and liberation mirrors many themes prevalent in our society. Power and control are central to the human condition, a point not lost on the Gnostics. In their depiction of the Archons, they painted a vivid picture of beings who wield power not through force, but through manipulation of perception, a theme that is strikingly familiar in our age of information and disinformation. The Archon's illusion of control echoes in the myriad ways in which power is exercised today. From the manipulation of narratives in the media to the subtle nudges of behavioral economics, we see the shadow of the Archons. But the Gnostic tale does not end with control. It speaks also of awakening, of the power of gnosis or knowledge to dispel illusion. This is a theme that resonates strongly in our age of awakening, where information is democratized and knowledge is widely available. We see this spirit of liberation in the rise of grassroots movements, in the spread of education, and in our relentless pursuit of truth in the face of misinformation. Just as the Gnostics sought liberation from the Archons through Gnosis, so too do we seek to free ourselves from the illusions that bind us. The echoes of the Archons can also be seen in contemporary art and philosophy. In film and literature, we often encounter narratives of individuals struggling against unseen forces, seeking to break free from a reality that is not what it seems. These stories, consciously or not, echo the Gnostic tale of the Archons and our struggle for liberation. In philosophy too, we find reflections of the Archons. Postmodern thought, with its emphasis on deconstruction, and questioning of established narratives carries echoes of the Gnostic skepticism towards the illusions spun by the Archons. Similarly, existentialist philosophy with its focus on individual freedom and authenticity resonates with the Gnostic emphasis on personal enlightenment as a means of liberation from Archontic control. 
But perhaps the most poignant echo of the Archons in our world today comes in our understanding of our own minds. The Archons, as symbols of our psychological and spiritual barriers, resonate strongly with modern psychological concepts. From cognitive biases that distort our perception of reality to the unconscious fears and desires that drive our actions, we see the influence of the Archons. And just as the Gnostics sought liberation through self-awareness and knowledge, so too does modern psychology emphasize the importance of self-understanding in overcoming our psychological barriers. Thus, the echoes of the Archons reverberate in our world today. Whether in our struggles for power and control, our pursuit of liberation and awakening, or our exploration of the inner landscapes of our minds, the tale of the Archons serves as a powerful allegory for the human condition. The story may be ancient, but its lessons are as relevant today as they were thousands of years ago. The Archons, once just celestial beings, now a symbol of human struggle. They stand as testament to our ceaseless battle against illusion and deception. Their presence in Gnostic cosmology, though unsettling, offers a profound mirror to our own existence. Their tale unravels the very fabric of our human experience. The quest for enlightenment, the struggle against unseen forces and the courage to seek truth beyond illusion. In the grand narrative of humanity, the Archons are not just celestial overseers. They are symbols of our inner demons, our fears, our insecurities. They represent the barriers we construct that hinder our path to self-awareness and spiritual growth. Today their tale continues to resonate, echoing in our collective consciousness, shaping our understanding of power, control and awakening. Their story is our story, a testament to the human spirit's resilience in the face of adversity. And so we continue our dance with the Archons, each step a step towards understanding ourselves and our destiny.